Hi, welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Paul Turnbull. Um, Monroe & Associates is an engineering consulting firm that does teardowns. We help our clients save money. And one of the ways we do that is having intimate engineering knowledge about how these things work. And in this case, we're gonna talk a little bit about electric machines, the electric motors that are used for traction for EVs and how they're cooled uh, and why they're cooled. So we've got a couple of examples here. This is a Tesla from the Cybertruck. Um, Tesla has in the Cybertruck a permanent magnet motor and two induction motors. And I've sort of mixed and matched some of the parts over here. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about Tesla's strategy for cooling the motor and how it's different from the General Motors strategy for cooling the motor uh, for, this is the Equinox motor um, that's used as we saw uh, in 10 different vehicles. Um, so first of all, why do you have to cool an electric motor? Now intuitively, it makes sense that of course, if it gets too hot, something might go wrong and it might fail. But exactly what fails? In engineering, we really need to know the details. And so the thing that, that you're trying to protect in the motor are the windings. So the, the windings, if they get too hot, this insulation that's um, covering the winding um, breaks down. And then where the, where the winding crosses over and you have one phase close to the other phase and you get a high voltage difference, if the insulation gets weak, then about a millisecond later, you get a smoking hole in your motor that uh, uh, you know, looks like a 50 caliber bullet hit it. Um, a millisecond before, the motor is working perfectly fine. There's absolutely, we've tried for 20 plus years to find some signature in the, in the way that the motor is operating that would let us give us some warning before of an impending failure. And unfortunately, there's still work to be done on that because we have not yet found a signature that shows it's about to fail. So you get one millisecond and boom, it's done. Uh, so we'd like that to not happen. And so you want to cool the motor to prevent the insulation from breaking down and to prevent that uh, failure mode of uh, the winding fit shorting. The other thing you have to protect in the motor to, from failure is in a permanent magnet motor, you need to keep the magnets cool. If you can keep the magnets below 140 degrees Celsius, then you can use a much less heavy rare earth. It's the, the heavy rare earth is the stuff that protects the magnets from demagnetization when they get hot. And so if you can keep them cool, then you don't have to use the expensive stuff that's hard to get. Um, if you can actually keep it below 120 degrees C, then you don't have to use any heavy rare earth at all. And it's just uh, neodymium, which you can get in any country of the world. And so that's one of the goals is to keep the rotor cool. If you have an induction motor like the Tesla here, um, then you have high currents flowing in the windings, in the squirrel cage. Um, this, there's aluminum bars that go through this that form a circuit. And that current that's flowing in the circuit heats up the motor. And so you need to protect the aluminum from getting too hot because when it gets too hot, it expands. And if this expands, when it's inside the stator, it's a bad day. So we, we have to run some oil or something to cool the rotor for both permanent magnet motors and induction motors. So that's kind of what we're trying to do to protect the motor. The other reason you wanna cool the motor is for efficiency. The windings, the hotter they get, the higher their resistance. A good rule of thumb is if and when the windings heat up by 100 degrees C, their resistance increases by 50%. And so 
at 120 degrees C, the windings have 50% more resistance and therefore 50% more loss than they would have at room temperature. And so you want to keep the windings cool. The only odd thing is that the winding, the the resistance of the windings is only a part of the story when it comes to the loss in the motor. So for efficiency reasons, yes, you want to keep the windings cool, but the steel is the other factor in um, the motor efficiency. So there are losses in the steel. And so ironically, the steel losses actually go down when the steel gets hot. So what we're doing inside the steel is the steel is creating, it's focusing the magnetic field. It's providing a path for the magnetic field that is low reluctance. It's sort of like a resistance for, um, for magnetic field. And so the steel provides that path. But inside the steel, we're constantly flipping the, the magnetic polarity of the, um, of the magnetic flux inside the steel from one direction to the other. And the atoms of the iron actually take less energy to flip when they're hot. So they're moving around, they're, they're jigg jiggling inside the, uh, the crystal structure of the steel. So when they're hot, it takes less energy to flip them back and forth. Also, when the steel is hot, the resistance, the electrical resistance of the steel is higher, which suppresses the eddy currents that could form when you're flipping the magnetic field back and forth. And so the iron loss, the, the loss that occurs inside the steel of a stator is actually lower when the motor is hot. So you have that partially offsets the losses the increase in losses due to the windings. And so the ideal mechanism for cooling would cool the windings and cool the magnets, but somehow keep the steel warm. And so we see the different uh, approaches that are used. Um, we want to, when we want to do this, all this cooling, and with using the absolute minimum amount of energy. So we want to, don't want to pull energy out of the battery to keep the, the motor cool. So here's, here's what Tesla does with it. Um, Tesla, we, we know that the hottest part of the motor is down in the center of the stack um, where heat from both the iron and the copper are combined to give you the, the most heat and it's hard to get coolant down into the center of the stack. And so what Tesla does is they, when they stamp these laminations, this whole stack of steel is made up of these thin laminations and they put oil channels in the outside portion of the steel stack. So they're flowing oil straight through these holes down the center of the stack. And they use this plastic part to help guide the oil down into the, these holes. Also, these, this uh, plastic part has these holes in it so that the high pressure oil fills the plastic part and then it sprays the oil down onto the windings. So they cool not only the center of the stack, but they also are spraying oil on the windings. Great way of going, uh, and it, it produces excellent cooling for the motor. The only downside is that they have to have a high pressure pump in order to force the oil down through these uh, little channels and force the oil through those little holes. So the high pressure pump uses energy from the battery in order to drive the oil through the stack and spray the oil on the windings. Um, the other thing that they're sending the oil through is they put the oil down through the center of the 
the rotor. And then the rotor shaft has these holes in it that allow the oil to escape. And as the rotor is spinning, the oil comes out of these holes in the rotor and then comes up over the end turn, these uh, end rings, and then spray up onto the inside of the windings on the stator. And so, yes, we have this oil that's spraying on the windings and we have oil coming off of the rotor and spraying on the inside of the windings. It turns out that actually most of the stator cooling is from the rotor oil because that oil is coming off the rotor so fast. It hits the windings with a high speed. It gets on the windings, pulls heat out and then gets off. So it ends up, you have a large mass flow rate and you have a large heat transfer coefficient that pulls a, a lot of heat out of the stator. So actually the rotor oil is doing the lion's share of the work, pulling the heat out of the stator. This GM does the same thing. They will, in fact, GM has been doing this for 20 years, putting oil down the rotor. Um, in this case, GM has done some things inside the rotor to direct the oil through the rotor and cool the magnets and then come out and spray it on the inside of the stator. And we see the same strategy being used by Ford and VW, um, uh, Hyundai, um, just about all of the major manufacturers are using this type of oil cooling on bar wound motors. Um, so this is the, the main way it's, it's being done to cool these things. Um, GM is taking a little bit different approach. Instead of relying on this high pressure pump, they use the, the gears. This is a trick that Toyota first did on the Prius C um, back uh, 15, 20 years ago. You, you just take the, the gears, you have to lubricate the gears. The gears fling the oil off when they spin at high speed. Uh, Toyota put cast features into their housing to catch the oil at the top of the motor and then let it rain down through holes in the, in the housing. GM has taken that to a whole new level where they bring that oil slung off of the gears of the transmission um, up into these passages and they've engineered these passages such that they put these little holes right above the windings of the stator and a larger hole to drop oil right on the center of the stack. And so using just gravity to allow the oil to feed down and rain down onto the um, stator to cool both the windings and the center of the stack. Um, they also, by the way, cool the, use the same feature to cool the three phase connections that are located right here. Um, so GM is doing it with uh, a relatively lower energy approach, but I want to give you a feel for how much engineering has to go into this. Because when you, when you do this, obviously the, the problem is when the car is on a tilt. So if you're going up a steep hill or going around a, a tight corner at high speed, like track conditions, um, that oil is not gonna rain straight down onto the windings. So we do simulation. Uh, so the engineers have to simulate the, the G-forces on the oil as it rains down. The only trouble is Oil, as any transmission oil en engineer will tell you, is very different stuff when it gets cold uh, versus when it's hot. When it's cold, it has the consistency of jello, doesn't want to flow at all. When it's hot, it has the consistency of water and flows rapidly. It also, depending on the impurities, has a very different um, characteristics for how, how it sticks the surface tension on how it sticks to the housing. And so when it's raining down at an angle, 
sometimes it wants to stick to the housing and to go and flow around and completely miss the windings. In order to fix that, there's just a tremendous amount of engineering that goes into the shape and diameter and number of these little holes and how the direction that they're pointed and that there's an enormous amount of testing involved to check those, uh, the simulation results to make sure that they have everything right because it's incredibly difficult to actually simulate the fine details, the boundary conditions um, of whether the oil sticks or doesn't on, the, on a casting. So when you're doing this kind of a approach, it seems simple, just fling the oil up and let it rain down. But there's every bit as much detail engineering um, as there is in the kind of engineering to put the high pressure um, system in like uh, Tesla has done. So that's kind of the overall picture of why we cool and different approaches by different companies to, do, uh, to implement that kind of cooling with different levels of energy. And both ways are working great in the field right now, uh, providing uh, extremely good cooling for the system and hopefully great life for the motor. Um, so that's, that's what we, um, whenever we see at Monroe, great engineering, and these are both examples of great engineering. Uh, we like to highlight that uh, for you, the audience, and um, when you were in the development process yourself as, as an OEM, you had come by and give us a call and we can look at your system and help you decide what the best way to cool your system is. Um, so give us a call anytime. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening.